What is up everybody? This is Ronnie, your go-to instructor if you want to learn how to design with Canva. Today I'm back at you with a new tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to learn how to design multicolor lines and frames. So uh, let's jump right into it. Uh, I'm super happy to be back with you today with this new tutorial. And to get started, we are going to use a presentation style document. So let's open one like this. So we, I'm going to present to you various options to create these multicolor lines and frames. Uh, some of them will be uh, using the same techniques and others will be uh, some kind of a hack around uh, the way of creating multicolor frames. So let's get uh, straight to it. And uh, for this, we are going to select our elements tab and search for a grid. Okay, so grids are these guys right here. Uh, they usually come full frame once you select them. So I'm going to resize it. Okay, and make this pretty much like a line not too thin. Okay, something like this, not too long either. So something, I would say about this size. And then I'm going to use canvas position button to center this in the middle of my screen. Okay, so that's the first step, create a grid. The next step is to go to my photo tab right here. Make sure you're not on the elements tab anymore, but on the photo tab, click here, and you're going to search for a gradient. That's my multicolor element, right? We want to create a multicolor um, frame or line. Okay, so I'm going to use something cool. Let's find a gradient that we all like. Mm, let's go for purple and blue like this. Okay, this is pretty cool. Okay, so I positioned this. Oh yeah, I went fast, but I just dropped this in my grid. And basically what it does is that uh, the, the photo enters the grid and just fits the grid. All right, so this is my line. I can rotate it as I wish. I can have the blue color on this side. It's entirely up to me. So uh, how do we create a frame out of this? Well, basically a frame is made out of four lines, right? So we can simply duplicate this and use, this to use these lines to create a frame. So I can position them, like I can use the safe zone like designed by Canva for example, to uh, to use them. So let me adjust that. I could do this, and then get rid of this one and, sorry, get rid of this one and just duplicate this one like this and make sure it is aligned on the same, uh, the same part, the same part of the safe zone. And then I will just duplicate this one more time. I will drop it, I will, sorry, I will rotate it like this and kind of bring the blue with the blue. And now I have to make this smaller. Oops. See the handle here. Okay, like this. But there is a slight problem is that now we have purple on blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this grid right here. And I'm going to flip this horizontally like this. And now we have a perfect Oops, let's see if it's perfect. Actually, I saw a little bit of a problem here. So I'm going to zoom Oh, Yes, it's slight, but it's there. Okay, now still I can make it smaller so it's behind it so we don't see it. All right, let's zoom back <coughs> to 50%. And I'm going to select this one duplicate, bring it on the other side like this. And I'm going to flip this one more time in order to match my colors there. Now we have a perfectly. So one thing that I I've noticed is that even if you select all of them, you cannot group them because they are grids and you cannot group grids apparently. So what I'm going to do is make sure they are selected and then make sure they are centered. So here they are centered. So guys, this is the, the first way of creating this multicolor frame. Uh, it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy about the result and you can place whatever you want here in the middle. I'm going to show you second way of doing this. So the second way of doing this, still using my grids right here. So back to the elements, back to grids. 
and I'm going to use the same uh, gradient like this. The second way of using this is kind of a, a hack around it. So it's not the proper way of designing it, but if it gets the job done, I'm a big advocate of if it gets the job done, just, just go ahead and do it. You don't need to always complicate your life. Um, so the hack around it is to create another rectangle. So I'm going to create a rectangle by hitting the R key on my keyboard there. This is the R key. Uh, and then it's perfectly centered already. And the edges, I, I, the difficulty here is that I have to make sure the edges are basically of the same, at the same distance from this uh, gray rectangle. So in order to measure that precisely, I'm going to bring in another shape into the picture. And so I have to click on the elements tab again, look for shapes, and I'm gonna head over and go, go, uh, go ahead and, and import a square. So this is my square, I'm going to give the square another color, which is kind of popping out so I can clearly see it, resizing it. And then the trick is to position this, to use this as a mark to see like this see this is now exactly touching and I'm just double checking that yes indeed this is the same uh, size everywhere so it's perfect my uh, frame here is ready I could even go like bigger like if I want to have a thinner frame I can hold the shift button and drag this to make it bigger Okay, and then I will have to position it in the center. Okay, I think I changed something here, but you get the point, you get the idea. So holding the shift button was not the perfect solution here, but um, you definitely can replicate this little, um, little measurement proce process that we have done with the square. So you can replicate that uh, here is if you want. And then once you have your your frame at the right distance from the from the, the gray rectangle, you can actually change the color of this rectangle. You can give the white color so that you have the illusion of having a multicolor frame. Of course, it's not a multicolor frame because this uh, these are basically uh, like a grid and a white rectangle on top of it. But depending on what you have to create, this could do the trick. If you want to create a thumbnail for your YouTube video, for example, you could totally use this and keep the white background, or you can change the color of this to match the color of your background. It's really up to you. So that's uh, what I have about creating frames. Now I'm going to switch over and showing you how to and show you how to create multicolor lines. And there are a couple of different options here as well. But before that, guys, if you're watching this video on YouTube, please take a second and give me a thumbs up so that YouTube recognizes that, okay, you like this video, you like my tutorials because I'm trying to grow the channel. So if you do like the tutorials I'm creating for you guys, please just take one second, give me a thumbs up. Uh, and if you are, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, I suggest you do because I have a bunch of new tutorials coming for you in the coming weeks. You know that we publish a video every week. I will tell you at the end of this video what is to come. So in order to make sure you know you never miss uh, a Canva tutorial, uh, I suggest you just uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. You can hit the bell uh, icon as well if you want to get a notification to receive a notification every time I publish a new video. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, and if you are watching this tutorial on Facebook, uh, the Facebook group is already pretty big. So just what you could do is to leave me a comment and let me know what kind of tutorials you hope to see in the future. All right, back to uh, our tutorial about creating shapes, uh, sorry, about creating frames and lines. So now we are about to create a multicolor line. So the first option is, of course, to use the same technique. So to use a grid like this one, make it the size of a, of a, of a line and you can really go. What I love about grids is that they are so flexible. It's actually the most volatile kind of element in terms of possibilities offered to you by Canva to create a line because you can 
you can uh, go ahead and, and modify the width, but also the length of it. So both of these parameters without, I mean, for the other elements, for example, let's say if I import a line like this one, okay? So here I can play with the length, but I cannot reduce the width, right? So I have to choose one or the other. What I like about the frames that you can have control over both these um, parameters. So that's perfect. So there we go. We create a nice line here in the middle of our design. Once again, I'm going to use the pos position button to center it. And then, uh, of course, dropping my gradient in it. So it's in the photos. Um, let's use the same one. Oops, not this one, this one. Boom. So that's the first way. That's the easy way, the way that you already know. Another way of uh, using gradient lines is to actually go over to the elements here and to search, not to search, but to go to the gradient category. And there you will have a couple of different lines and strokes and stuff like that. So I'm going to import a few of them to show you. So that's a kind of like a paint stroke. Uh, brush stroke, sorry. Uh, what else do we have? Like we have like kind of distorted strokes. We have uh, like more transparent strokes. This is interesting. Uh, we have kind of like a thick line like this. We can create a dash, we can create a, but it's again, you cannot play with the width here. So I'm just going to delete this, and show you something else. Uh, this one, this one is a nice line and you can make it shorter it has some nice rounded. So what we are going to do now is to basically harmonize these uh, three lines so that they look similar. For this, I'm going to use a Chrome extension, which is uh, the color picker. I've already talked a lot about the color picker on this channel uh, or on this group. So the color picker is a Chrome extension. You can install it if you use Chrome and then it adds this little color picker icon right here. You can use that to pick any color on your screen. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this pink right here or magenta. I'm not sure how to call this color and I'm going to drop it here. So I basically copied and paste the hex code like this. So I have the magenta. I need the, the kind of like blue sky. So again, color picker, pick it here. And then I'm going to copy this, come back to this stroke and paste there. So we have now uh, harmonious colors compared to the first line. And if I want to flip this, I can flip this horizontally like this. And we can do the same with this one. Uh, the only difference is that we already have the colors. So it's actually easier like this. So there we go, guys. The last thing I need to do in this video is to actually show you uh, a cool application for these uh, techniques. Oops, I can see here that something is not completely nice. All right. Um, OK, so let me show you an application for this. So let's say I'm creating a video. You know me. I create a lot of videos and I need a nice colored lower third. So what is a lower third? A lower third is basically a graphic that will go that is going to pop up on the screen when uh, I will I will show up. So let's say it's the beginning of this tutorial and let's say I have a talking head uh, in the tutorial. Uh, I want to introduce my name to the audience. So I will have this graphic with my name. Typically, this is called a lower third. So I'm going to position this graphic here at the bottom of my screen using canvas safe zone again to position it and the next thing i need is a text so t to come to call a text box i use the key the t stroke on my keyboard i'm going to make this bigger let's say 56 i will need to make this slightly bigger as well center it like this i'm going to use a font that i that i like prompt bold and I'm going to type in my name, Ronnie Hermosa. OK, I want this all caps and I want this on one single line. OK, now I can select this, center it properly and use a white color. Good. This is pretty cool. Let me show you how it would look 
if I had a video going on in the background. So for this, I'm going to select and insert a grid one more time, push that to the back so that my uh, lower third shows on top. Okay. And I think I have here in my uploads a recent screenshot of myself. Yes, creating a video. So this is how it would look. So all I have to do now, if I have a Canva Pro subscription, I can simply go ahead and download slide page number four as a PNG with a transparent background, get rid of this and this too. And then I will have this lower third ready to go on my next video. If I uh, upload this to my Premiere Pro, for example, uh, this is how it works. So that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Once again, if you do and you're watching us on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Give me a like so that the algorithm starts to give me some more love and I can grow this channel bigger so I can teach more people how to use Canva. Uh, if you are watching this on, on Facebook, uh, leave us a comment. Let us know, let me know what you think about this tutorial and maybe propose some next tutorial ideas so that I can start uh, creating them for you guys. And as I said in the beginning, I am creating a series of tutorials for those, the weeks to come. So uh, in the future tutorials, you will have the pleasure to follow along with me how to animate your designs. This was a big debate in our group. Uh, somebody posted a video of animated slides there and everybody was like, oh, how did you do that? So I'm going to teach you how to do this in a coming week, a coming tutorial. We are going to uh, talk about advanced search tip or so how to run advanced searches on Canva. Uh, we are going to learn how to create custom icons for some Windows folders. So that's going to be pretty cool. We are going to talk about stickers uh, because they are all the rage and this is the new thing on Canva. So where to find them, how to use them, uh, how to properly export them. So stickers, everything you have to know about them. And also I'm going to yes talk about this new button. There's a new button in Canva, this little guy right here. Uh, I'm going to show you everything that it does and how to use it. So if you want all this good stuff coming to you, uh, in the next weeks. Good stuff coming to you uh, in the next weeks. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow along. And for me, and for me, that's it for today. I will see you in the next video.